السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله Dear brothers and sisters, tonight by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the 21st night. Tonight is the first night of the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Tonight is an odd night. It could very well be Laylatul Qadr, only Allah knows. But it is important for us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at every precious moment of these last 10 nights as much as possible. And say the Masnoon dua, if it happens to be Laylatul Qadr, our mother Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, if it happens to be Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? And he said to her, say, Allahumma inna ka'afoon. Oh Allah, you, lo- you often and frequently pardon. Oh Allah, you love pardoning. Oh Allah, pardon me. May Allah pardon all of us and our loved ones from the punishment of the hellfire permanently. Amin. Brothers and sisters, we are reciting Surat Az Zumar. We completed that and we started Surat Ghafir, also known as Surat Mu'min. And Az Zumar means group or groups. And this is very important because it has to do with our associations and it has to do with our BFFs and it has to do with our loyalties, it has to do with our allegiances, it has to do with our alliances, and it has to do with where we are going to go and with whom. This is very important. This is about Jannah and Jahannam, okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayat, of the context of the Yawmul Qiyamah. The Day of Judgment starts, and then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ And those who disbelieved will be heard, herded to hellfire, will be taken or directed to hellfire. The key word here is in groups. Zumara. The whole surah is called Surah Al Zumar for a reason. The murderers will go together. The gen- genocidal maniacs will go in there together under the banner of genocide. Those who are murabin, that are enslaving humanity through usury and interest, will go together. Those who are rapists will go together. Those who are supremacists will go together. Every single disbeliever that associates with a particular evil behavior and that group or gang or cult will go together based on their associations. It is important for us to understand this. Who and whom you associate with in this dunya, you will be together there. Whom you love dearly, these is who you would li- love to be with in the dunya. Guess what? The Prophet ﷺ said, Al mar'u ma'aman ahab. A person will be with whom they love. So look for whom you love so much and try to choose people that will take you to the next just destination. The next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, when He says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ جَهَنَّمَ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا When they arrive to that hellfire, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا The gates of hellfire opened wide. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا The angels in charge of hellfire will speak to those people that are going to hellfire. And they will say to them, أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُلٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِ رَبِّكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا قَالُوا بَلَى They tell them, the angels question them and say to them, Did you not have messengers from amongst you that, will, that came to you and warned you about this day and they recited the verses of your Lord upon you? They respond by saying, yes, they did. Yes, they did. But the punishment has been decreed upon the disbelievers. 
قيل دخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين والعياذ بالله They are told enter into the gates of hellfire that is the worst destination for the arrogant ones that is the worst destination for the mutakabbirin arrogant ones the definition of takabbur prophetically speaking the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said al kibru batar al haqq wa ghamt al nas kibr arrogance is rejection of the truth denial of the truth it's clear in front of you but no we're going to deny it's evident no i'm going to say something else and twist and turn and deflect that behavior is arrogance and the second part of arrogance the being defined by rasulullah sallallahu is looking down on people belittling people looking downwards nas. you think you're elite you think you're better you think you're higher everybody else is beneath you that outlook is kibr and therefore we have to counter these things number one we have to accept the truth and we have to stand with the truth and our loyalties should be with the truth Regardless of family, regardless of tribe, regardless of party, associations, it doesn't matter. We have to stick to the truth. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwamina lillahi shuhada'a bil qist. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kunu qawwamina bil qist shuhada'a lillahi walaw ala anfusikum awil walidayni wal aqrabin. إن يكن غنيا أو فقيرا فالله أولى بهما فلا تتبع الهوى أن تعدلوا وإن تلو أو تعرضوا فإن الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا Always be honest and just and fair regardless if it's against your own parents your own relatives close, far, rich, poor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this in the Quran So avoid anything that would get you to hellfire and arrogance is definitely a quality of those who are destined to go to hellfire. Do not de- de- denounce or reject the truth. And don't belittle other people and look down on them. The very next ayat. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا اللَّهُمْ اجْعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ and those who ittaqaw rabbahum listen carefully this word is in the quran embedded in almost every time people are going to jannah it's muttaqin muttaqin is the word ittaqaw those who feared allah those who lived mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they navigated life based on the guidance of allah they were afraid to transgress and worship their desire or nafs or purchase dunya and sell their akhirah those people, they navigated life away from the displeasure of Allah. And therefore, they gained the pleasure of Allah. Those people are called muttaqeen, God-fearing people. We need to be God-fearing people. Those are those who are going to Jannah. It's the God-fearing people. And you'll see that everywhere in the Quran. They are directed to Jannah also in groups. The muttaqeen go to Jannah in groups. Inna al-Muslimina wal-Muslimati wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minati wal-Qanitina wal-Qanitati wal-Sadiqina wal-Sadiqati wal-Sabirina wal-Sabirati wal-Khashi'ina wal-Khashi'ati wal-Mutasaddiqina wal-Mutasaddiqati والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما The believing men and women who submit to Allah, those who are devoted to Allah, 
men and women, those who are patient, men and women, believers, those who are generously giving charity, men and women, those who are fasting, men and women, those who protect their privates, men and women, those who remember Allah frequently, men or women. What about them? Allah has prepared a forgiveness for them and a great reward. That reward is Jannah. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا So choose which group you want to be in. The group of those who fast a lot, nafil pray, if fast as well, they enter into a special gate in Jannah called Babu Rayyan. Allah has a special entrance for them. Only the fasting people go through it. And after that, they enter, it's closed forever. There are people that are givers, mutasaddiqeen. They give generously. Do you want to be amongst those in Jannah? The sadiqeen, truthful people. You want to be amongst those in Jannah? Those who are devoted to Allah. They are only slaves to Allah. Do you want to be amongst those? Those who submit to Allah. The first description. Those who submit to Allah. Who conform to Allah. Their master, our master. The only absolute master. Those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special group for them. So brothers and sisters, choose wisely. Choose wisely your associations, your BFFs, your really close, near and dear folks. Choose ones that will be in a group that's going to Jannah together, inshallah. Stay away from a group that's going to be a group also, but going to hellfire wal billah. And then when they enter into Jannah, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ And before they even enter into Jannah, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ the angels of Jannah will say to them when the gates of Jannah open wide, welcoming the people of Jannah, may Allah make us amongst them. The angels will greet them and say to them, Salamun alaykum. You know that greeting we're familiar with in this dunya? Make it a core greeting for you. That's the greeting Allah will greet you with, the malaika will greet you with. Tibtum fadhuluha khalidin. You were good and you are now successful, enter into Jannah eternally. Eternally. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي صَدَقَنَا وَعْدَهِ وَأَوْرَثَنَا الْأَرْضَ نَتَبَوَّأُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ حَيْثُ نَشَاءُ فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ They said, Alhamdulillah, who has fulfilled his promise to us. Allah promises, if you believe in La ilaha illa Allah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and do good sincere deeds, Allah will get you to Jannah. That's his promise. That's his promise. He fulfills his promise. And therefore, they realize even more, or they live through that, and they actually say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi sadaqana wa'da, wa awrathana al-arda natabawwa'u min al-jannati haythu nasha'a. Now, we have inherited this jannah, and we can go anywhere in this jannah. فَنِعْمَ أَجْرُ الْعَامِلِينَ Allah says this is the most beautiful reward for the doers. Brothers and sisters, in these last ten nights, these are the nights of doing. The Prophet ﷺ, our mother Aisha radiallahu said, when these ten nights arrived, Ahya layl the Messenger ﷺ worshipped Allah most of the night. Ahya layla wa aiqadha ahlah, and he woke up his family to join him. Wa shadda al mi'zara wa jadda. The Prophet ﷺ was serious in his worship. He was devoted in his worship. He was dedicated to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these most precious nights. So therefore we should try to do the same. Now it is a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to do i'tikaf. Let me briefly go over this. I'tikaf means that we designate our time in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the masjid particularly. That is i'tikaf. And it could be for a moment, five minutes, one minute. It could be for a few hours. It could be for a day. It could be for more. I'tikaf doesn't have a limit on the time of i'tikaf or days of i'tikaf. 
You can do it now, the intention of i'tikaf, you're an i'tikaf. And when you leave the masjid, you're no longer an i'tikaf. You come back, you're an i'tikaf. Do you follow me? Now you can make the intention, I would like to do i'tikaf for whatever time I'm in the masjid. That counts. You make i'tikaf, I'm going to make intention to make i'tikaf the last 10 nights of Ramadan. That counts. When you leave the masjid, it's okay. It's okay to go to the restroom, it's okay to go to eat, it's okay to go shower, it's okay to go to a janazah, to visit a sick person, all that is okay. It is also okay to go to your job and then come back and do your i'tikaf in the masjid. Whatever time you spend in i'tikaf, that counts towards i'tikaf. What is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam? He used to do i'tikaf the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The last 10 nights of Ramadan he used to do in the masjid. Does that mean you have to do that? It means you should try, but if you can't, do whatever you can. If you can't do all 10 days, do whatever you can. But try to spend time, more time in the masjid, as this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the last 10 nights. We have to be cognizant of those in the masjid with us. When we are in i'tikaf, please, some of the adab, the etiquettes, is to keep the noise level very down, very low. After we're done with taraweeh around midnight, nobody should be making noise in the masjid, no one. People need to rest for three hours because we get up at 3.45 to pray. So you need to be very respectful of those who are sleeping in the masjid for i'tikaf. So don't make a noise, don't leave your kid running around, don't be running around yourself, don't talk to others loudly and obnoxiously. Do not do that. You want to do that, go outside. Let people sleep. There should be no activity in the masjid from after taraweeh till 3.45. None. Let people rest. You want to do individual ibadah, turn on that corner light over there and recite Quran silently. But the masjid, we should be respectful to those who are getting some rest between taraweeh and qiyam. We get up for qiyam, we pray, and then inshallah ta'ala 4.30 we have the blessed tent with so many delicious meals or dishes for suhoor, it's made to accommodate you. So everyone can come, men, women, children, pray with us qiyam. It's only 45 minutes, 3.45 to 4.30. Pray, come and join us for dua, the last one third of the night, and then you don't have to prepare anything. It's accommodating you. Go to the tent and eat some suhoor. Then come back to the masjid, read some more Qur'an, make some more dua, and then we pray Fajr in Jama'ah, and have inshallah short khatira, inshallah ta'ala, after Salatul Fajr. And then we go on with our days. This is important for us to kind of be cognizant of respecting the masjid, keeping the masjid clean, being respectful and mindful to those who are doing i'tikaf. And brothers and sisters, Surah Al-Zumar reminds us to choose wisely whom we associate with, who we want to be resurrected with and be entering into Jannah, insha'Allah, hopefully with, insha'Allah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa qumu ila salatikum, ya rahamakum Allah.